Hello, it's Christine from the channel Christine and Celeste. It's been a while since I've posted a video. And today I felt like uh, doing a VR to Natalia from Ouroboros. And it's about the uh, hashtag Seven Council. Council of Seven. Let's get the title right. Uh, Council of Seven. <clears throat> So basically, yes, we're going to show cards and tarot, and it's only tarot actually today. Um, and it's about me being the ruler of my kingdom. And then I have uh, seven council mem members that give me advice. So which are the seven? Of course, <clears throat> as soon as she said seven, I went, ooh, chakras. So I'm going to adapt it a bit to my inner source because hey, it's the way I work. So um, I will do it from the chakras point of view. Uh, I hope it's okay with you, Natalia, <laughs> but uh, I need to uh, exactly show how I use uh, my own tarot. But they were my counselors now. <clears throat> There's an election all the time, like once a year, I'm like, mm, are you still within my council? Because, uh, you know, new decks arrive and push old ones out and old ones try to come back in. And um, So let's start anyway with my seven decks. We're going to start with the base chakra. It doesn't matter if you don't know anything about the chakras, but it's just the one, the base chakra is the one that... Um, it's our, your roots. So, for this, I chose, and I've seen it in a few videos already, Tarot of the Crown by Ellen Lorenzi Prince. It's uh, uh, self-published. It has a little booklet there, but also you can buy a playbook, um, which is great too. <clears throat> now, this deck. Why did I choose this deck? Oh, <laughs> it surprised me. Um, you know, you, you buy decks. You, you know, I have many decks and you buy decks and think, oh, this one is just going to fit perfectly for this and that. And then they get home and wah, 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 nothing happens. And then you see someone else again using it and you think, oh yeah, it's a great deck. Let's try again, still nothing. This one went straight through. Um, so this is my routing one. Uh, what I like is that it looks simple, but actually it's multidimensional. If you see here, for example, this um, picture here with all the little crowns in it and the head is, there's nothing in the head, but these blue kind of air waves <laughs> or water waves. But then if you look at the whole picture, it's like a keyhole. Um, I just love this deck. It's dark, but it's extremely colorful too. And one of my issues <laughs> in this world, I have many, but one of them is to stay grounded. I have a facility to go up, 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 up very fast. I remember once in a meditation, I mean, how embarrassing is that? We're meditating on a heart chakra and uh, going very deep in it. And at some point I felt someone, but you know, after a while pulling on my feet and my legs, and it was the tutor because he saw that I was gone way, way too far. So he was pulling me back. I mean, in the meditation, you know what I mean? Um, so anyway, let's go back to this deck. Um, I'll just take a few cards. <clears throat> it's the deck that pulls me back down. And it's saying to me now, be here now and pay real attention to what is happening around you and within you, both. Um, some of the cards are intuitive, some I use the guidebook for. Another thing that this deck brings me, I mean, you don't need to be a crone to, to read with it, obviously, but one of the things that this deck brings to me is it makes me go deep, 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 not only inside me, but inside the earth. 
and uh, I do some um, like this one. <laughs> I do some kind of traveling with it. They're otherworldly. Uh, these uh, figures, they're otherworldly. Look at this door. You don't know. Have you been through it? Have you tried? If you have this deck, have you tried to go through the red door? I haven't yet. I will get the courage whenever. You know, it's uh, it's quite a door, for example, and it's only the two of wands. So even the miners um, are completely powerful. It's obviously a very woman deck, but with an attitude. <laughs> Uh, it's not long floaty hair with long dresses and uh, you know outside in the wind and looking fabulous. No, it's uh, it brings you back to reality, well me anyway. And it has many layers. The colors too have been chosen, especially uh, per suit. So um, except the majors have all the colors, but then all the suits have different colors. The um, minors, the court cards have been um, uh, reinterpreted. Look at these six of swords. They are meditative cards too. They're ones you can gaze at and just get lost in. You can actually get in the card, think this is you, and you walk the past along with these two other uh, figures and and walk and see where you're going. You see what I mean? It's um, It has multi-layers. Let's move on because I have six more. <laughs> God, it was hard to choose. I'm sure I'm going to pause the video and go, oh, and this one. And tomorrow I'm going to wake up and, oh, I forgot this one. But, you know, I'm doing my best. As I said, you know, some are coming in and going out. And I like them all. But I had to choose for specific points. Now, for the second chakra, the sacral. Um... I chose the Tarot de Saint-Croix. It took me a very long time to buy it. I liked it. It's funny, but it didn't... I don't know. Some decks you think, oh, it's always on the wish list, you know, and it still stays in a wish list. And if it's top then of the wish list, but you see another deck, you buy another deck. That's what happened to this one. And I've had it for a while now. And... Um, Wow, it's quite a deck. So it's got a little booklet. It's by Lisa de Saint-Croix. Um, I didn't show you the backs on my crown. It's all black. It's all black. So I think it's the second edition. Anyway. Now, about this chakra, about, uh, you know, it's all your, more, as a female, anyway, more your feelings and female organs if I can say this and about your experience as a woman uh, in this world and how you project your feelings and there's something about these decks that absolutely makes me project and travel with it. It's difficult sometimes to put words on it. Uh, like this fool. You know where it comes from? Well, you know where it comes from. It comes from... There's a... Yes, there's a movement. Uh, and that's what I like in my cards. They come alive. There's a movement in them. It's maybe a gesture or, you know, like like this. It's I think it's great. Um, it's... Uh, sometimes the card starts moving by itself. It's not... Um, you know, I'm not crazy or anything. It's just that if you gaze at the card at some point, there, there'll be some natural things that will jump up. Let's put it like this. And this is one of them. It's extremely diverse. You go in all different parts of the world with it, with all different type of people. You do crazy things. And it's festive. Uh, I like that. Look at this Ten of Cups, for example. It's festive. Love Christmas. The Ten of Pentacles, that's me. I don't, I can't project myself, you see, with the, the family, and you know, because I'm not a big, you know, I don't have a big family, and my family is the family I, I built around me, 
and this would be more uh, not that it's just for fun but this would be more my type of ten of pentacles because even friends you know you have to build um, a relationship with them see the empress they're very delicate, extremely colorful. I need colors uh, in my decks. I do have a couple of black and white. But usually I need colors. Uh, look at this Knight of Cups. It's magical. It's just magical. So, yes, it goes <laughs> like the moon deep in my feelings and helps me project them and, and share them and and make sense of them sometimes. So I like this deck. Now, for the power chakra, the yellow one, the one where, you know, it's your ego, your power and everything. Now, this is the one I have. And <laughs> it's a chakra I struggle with and this tarot I, is forever on my uh, learning list. I'm constantly looking at the book trying to learn it and sometimes I think oh I'll just read it intuitively because it's a bit complex I find sometimes it's like it's by Pamela and Joyce Eakins it's a uh, mass produced by um, US game systems and okay it's based on the tree of life it's like a female source I, I, I'll put it like that I hope you know Pamela or oh, Joyce if you're watching that it's not too reducing your deck but um that's that's how I feel about it so that's the presentation card so you have all the information <clears throat> now there's also a tree of a transparent tree of life that you can play with in the uh, oops mm. there in the box I just wish these cards were, that's the backs. I just wish these cards were bigger. This eight of uh, wind or swords is uh, particularly strong for me. I can see a movement. Once again, these cards, you see, I feel that that comes in and out and you have to jump through all the hoops and it's quite a card. They all are, they all are. This is, I mean, if you watch one video of uh, Pamela or if you um, read the book, you, you'll see how intense and deep this is. So I'm not a source fan in general, um, but I'm a fan of this deck. It uh, nourishes my power. I absorb it. Sometimes I don't get a message, I just absorb it. It's a very yellow deck for me. Um, look at that, the six of wind, I mean, oh. I, I would have a lot of them uh, framed, honestly. They're paintings, so Look at this one of pentacles. And what I like, it's the one of us. So I'm a bit bored personally with pentacles and swords. And I like elements. The day I discovered elements in tarot was the day I, I started understanding what it's all about. Personally. So... I prefer when there's no one on the picture personally, I think it's uh, even more powerful. But look at that ace of fire. I mean, if you, I, I don't have the best camera here, but oh, look at the scenes here. And yeah, anyway, Terror of the Spirits gives me that power uh, and I can absorb from the card if I can if it means anything to anyone <laughs> you're gonna watch and go oh. <laughs> what is she talking about but um <laughs> yeah it's very peepish but in another way it's not just um like here it's not nine pentacles put together only and look at that 
Ace of Cups, I mean, one of water. It's absolutely exquisite, the exquisite cards. Please, can we have them slightly bigger? I'd love to have them bigger. They're just so powerful. Um, each one is like a portal, and that's what your tarot should be. Hmm? Often, it should be a portal. So, there you go. We're getting to my heart chakra. Oh, I didn't show you the book. <laughs> mm. There it is, Tarot of the Spirit. It's, uh, yeah, <laughs> intense, intense. You know, I'm a person who feels more than uh, studies. I do study, obviously, but um, less intellectual and more feel. That you, we all have our different senses, don't we, that are more developed. So for the heart chakra, uh, which is... Just to sum up, it's the one in the middle of all the chakras. It's the one that links you to above and to below. And, oh, it has a lot of properties, but it's the healing and it's the... It's, uh, funny enough, it's air element. So if you want to put it towards tarot, it's, that'd be swords, which um, are a lot more negative in some decks than others but anyway uh, it was evident to me that I needed a balance deck because the heart balances and there was only one and that's the only tarot you know if like I have a fire or anything that's the only tarot that's by the door I know it's a bit crazy sounds crazy again but it's by the door not far from the door I know I can grab it and run with it and it's my uh, Arasoma New Air and Tarot. So that was the very first edition, 2005. I came across it <coughs> at the time. That's the one with the... That's by uh, Pamela Matthews. That's the one with the bottle backs. There's a little booklet which I never used, really. But it's a good summary. Um, I use the... Well, uh, the first page. Um, yeah, the tarot symbols. Okay. Anyway, I can't. I'm already quite long. Yes, halfway through. I'll try to keep it as short as I can. But we all love these videos, don't we? I hope you're enjoying mine. <laughs> now, there's a hundred and mine has a hundred and. 15 cards, so it's a, it's a big tarot. What it is, I'll, I'll show a normal card like the sun. So you have um, the normal tarot, 78 cards. And at the back, you have the bottle that corresponds to it. And, uh, and then it's a whole different reading. I don't want to get into it right now, but this is the this is my healing tarot how can i say in a way this tarot is neutral it's neutral and it uh, vibrates to all frequencies that's how i leave this tarot now there's a lot of study to do with it too because arasoma it's from arasoma and arasoma has its own healing system which are one part of it are uh, the uh, bottles. And uh, so the colors of the bottle are reflected, are used on the, <coughs> excuse me, drawing itself, right? Um, so you can do with a, um, a reading and then you can do a healing reading with it. And then if you have the real bottle, you can do a, a massage with the bottle. So it's a full system that's very interesting. And depending on what type of uh, tarot um, readings you, you want to give, it has also Ascended Masters. The style is very delicate and soft. It's not, to me, it's not a tarot where we look at it and say, oh, tomorrow you'll get a new job. It's, it's really not for that. It's, it's really a heart chakra. It's one that connects everyone to everything. 
that's the best I can describe it. Um, they have the scary cards too. <laughs> But it's generally a soft system. The, the oils themselves are in the bottles and the cards are soft. Now look at this. You also have archangels. I'm sure I'm going to miss some because there are so much, you know, there's so much to say about this tarot. But it's a tarot I need um, when I need to get balanced, when I need to get calm, it calms me. Um, and also when I want to just plunge into colors with the backs and, and um, just swim in it. <laughs> yes, so... Then they have some um, majors returns, so it means that they have an, another set of majors that um, are realized. Like you've you've gone through the fool's journey to, to the to the word, and then you come back and you've you're realized you you've been through it and you come back realized. And for example, that be the devil realized. Yeah. Uh, many many things um, to learn here and to absorb and to play with and it's a playful tarot too because of the colors if you like colors hmm. yes there are symbols to all over the cards and um, you know there in the booklet you can see always the symbols anyway that's the Arasama Tarot, that's my heart one, my balancing one, my healing one, soft healing, um, which is, if I have to keep only one tarot, it'd be this one, but obviously I'd be crying about all the others too, <laughs> so there you go, I'll never just have one. <clears throat> the next one will be for the throat, so it's about communication and... Um, the way you express yourself to the word, also the listening to the word, and, you know, clairaudience and things like this. And it's a mass market one. It's one that I've had, because when I tried to learn tarot, it was in the UK, and uh, they recommended the right away, which personally I never, I never liked. So, um, I asked for some, you know, uh, if I could buy a tarot that was similar with different pictures and this one was on the list and it's the Aquarian. And the Aquarian is the only tarot I use to do readings for others. Um, I've done readings professionally with it, I've had it for so many years. And um, it's the tarot that helps me express myself that uh, because without it I would never have done professional readings um, it's a tarot that showed me the chakras if you followed my channel you know that uh, one day some I was doing a reading and some all these colored lights happened on the card and I was like <laughs> what is happening and then bit by bit because I was doing some yoga I, I realized that it was chakras and then um, now I can read chakras with these cards in a very easy manner but look at this for example this ace of Swords. I found I find the art exquisite too I know it's not to everyone's taste uh, but uh, that's my taste um, it is really telling me that the communication is coming from up to down. I'm grounding the communication. So it's a perfect deck to, to me to do readings for others. So it's the deck that 
connects my voice, gives me a voice and connects my voice to others. If you can see, you know, there's always, I can't, I can't see chakras everywhere in this, uh, in this deck, so I'm not going to go on too much about chakras, but really, um, it gives me another depth of uh, reading with it. I don't know when I got it. What's the 1970? I didn't get it in 70. But mid 80s, I think. Just the backs. Mid 80s. Yes. I like the layers. See, that's why you're showing, and then that's what's at the back, and you're going towards that back. And I feel the layers. I can go through in a reading. Um, obviously, just like this, because I'm not within the reading, maybe it doesn't say much. But um, now and again, I look at a card and I'm like, oh, it reminds me of this and that. Um, so, yes, that's my go to. It's the only one I use for others. <clears throat> it's the one that gets my all this area open and ready to share um, some insights with others. So. I don't have a booklet. Uh, I think there's, you can download it still from, uh, because it's um, uh, US games. So if you don't have a booklet like me, but I mean, I never look at the booklet for this deck. Uh, it's on their site, you can download them. Now, third eye, we're getting to the third eye. And my counsel for the third eye, um, there are many, but I had to choose one once again. And once again, it's a mass produced, and it's the Raven's Prophecy. There's something about this deck. First of all, I like black, 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 black decks, and I wish the everything was black <laughs> even the edges everything but anyway i edged it in in sparkly orange but um shiny sparkly this deck it's like um you know if you write a story and you gave a lot of details and you know the the story is like 200 pages this deck puts it in three two, three words. That's what it does to me. I don't have a particular connection with ravens. So I can't say, oh, you know, I love ravens. That's why I've got it. Not at all. It's just the black background and the simplicity but strong image makes my just kicks in my intuition just it's it's just what my intuition needs to uh project and open that's softer cards too it's not a hard deck but it's quite a deck if you see the nine of swords it's quite a deck and that's why i like you don't need um you know someone with nine swords whatever just this and it says it all and I like that it's straight to the point um, and yet if you get into this card you can feel what is it water the reflection and you see it moving and I don't know this like this temperance how genius I, I find that personally I just wish um, US games would <clears throat> Print it, first of all, a little bit bigger. I've got big hands, so I keep saying this. I can hear you saying, no, no, I've got small hands. Well, I want mine a bit, little bit bigger. It's not that it's small, especially, but I like bigger cards and, and not with that orange border. You know, that five of ones is, um, I can feel it. I see the destruction here, where if I see five people with their wands fighting, I, I don't feel it. I feel that. The power of it. Mm. And 
Yeah, there are beautiful cards like this. Uh, it's just some just um, really touch me. Um, yeah. yeah. There's a lot I could show you. It's um. Uh, it's a deck that vibrates at a different um, frequency and I feel this frequency is a bit of beyond the veil frequency and a nighttime frequency I could show you every card but <laughs> yeah but yeah I'm looking at them I should show them to you I'm looking at them oh I'll show this one and this one and that one and it's um yeah one like that the seven of wands it's it's like the other side of the mirror but it's for me it talks about me and that's why i like it's not going your way to other lands to get lost it's my other side of the mirror there's if you could call it maybe shadow work too, you could go there. That talks more to you. And my last one, I will use um, for my crown chakra. Now, <clears throat> funny enough, the crown chakra one is not one that, or because the crown chakra, you know, is linked to the base and it's straight line and, and then it links you to the universe. But I took it more because when I do readings for me, I already have my Ravasoma where all my spirituality is in my heart. So I didn't need that uh, on the crown chakra. You have to see how you function when you read chakras. And obviously everybody would put guides, not everybody, but some people would put guides and everything up there. For me, I... I went more on the intellectual side of things with it and it's one that I fell in love I saw it one day I fell in love with it I had to leave with it I said you know it was it belonged to someone else and I said I'm not leaving without it and it's the um, elemental tarot I don't know if it's being reprinted I know that um, Caroline Smith and John Astrop's decks are being reprinted for the moment uh, so I don't know Mine is like the first edition at the time, and then it went out of print for a very long time. That's the backs, which I absolutely adore. Now, this deck. When I say intellectual, there's a lot more than this, but it has a lot of elements that really make my mind happy. <laughs> first of all, that's the card, so I'll show you a little bit uh, what there is on the card so obviously the element name because it's elemental um, the number the symbols for the number the astrological symbols because uh, John Astro was an astrologer the name of the god the goddess the elemental symbol and the Egyptian symbols and then for the major arcanas you do have um, the um, the poem that was found come on um, sorry I don't know the sound of perfect mind that's it it was found on a pap papyrus and I'll show you for example on the strength this is bits of the poem where you see outside you, you see inside you it's visible and it's your own garment <laughs> it's funny I pick strands because it's one of my least favorite cards in the deck but this strand, I, how can I start with this deck? Um, first of all it speaks to my mind and as I said I'm more a feeling person so I don't normally read with my mind, which is funny, isn't it? But it's the way I feel it. Uh, so this one triggers things in my mind, first with this, 
also the Egyptian theme. It's not all Egyptian, but it's the style is to the style of drawing. And there's so much, so many layers in every card, like the serpent with three heads, the ink crosses uh, falling into their mouths, and she's she holds the glass. And she has this lamb around her, and she's naked. Um, there it's the infinity symbol. She's got, I can't remember what that sign is. It's another Egyptian sign. And I mean, it's endless. I love getting lost in them. And you have the poem, and then you have, once again, you know, the all the other um, information astrology everything i'm such a big fan of this deck uh, that's that's my deck if i can say deck number two but then again <laughs> like so many but this one has been with me for a very long time too um i don't see people using it i don't get it that often because i'm it's mine <laughs> i should play more with it um and share it but it's try don't share it much uh, with people see this is an example of a multi-layered card where I can just stay for I don't know a long time and look at all the different layers of this card and just with one card have a great great reading or insight because not everything is about reading Sometimes it's just a, a word or an insight. The gods' names. I still don't know them. I love looking at them too. They're unusual. So... Um, Nothing is normal in this, and I think it's because my head is not quite wired <laughs> in a normal manner. I don't know. Um, but this really talks to me. That's how my mind works. That's how my mind works. It's not 3D or 4D or 5D. It's very simple, but at the same time, it has many layers, and that's what makes it uh, complex. Look at the pool. So, just a big heart for this, uh, for my seventh chakra. I do hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, presentation of my Council of Seven decks and that I could transmit my love for them and why I use them. And uh, I'm looking forward, I think I've watched already two VRs, and I'm looking forward to watching more VRs because it's a very interesting subject. And I will um, start filming the uh, Oracles one, which is the Seven Guides, which is going to be an interesting one to choose to. So, glad uh, that you watched me again, and I hope to see you very soon. Bye-bye.